So good morning and welcome back. It is now Sunday morning. The first rose has bloomed. There's a couple more coming. I think that would be millions there almost now. It's an amazing, amazing rose bush. Um, the weather is picking up. It's brighter, a lot brighter than it was yesterday and it's dry. So that's pretty good. Um, we're going to, as I said yesterday, head down to the coast this afternoon. Um, it's going to be too cold to be uh, sunbathing, but we can at least play play a little bit along the beach. The kids will love that. Uh, pick up a couple of things from the supermarket and then uh, and then head back. Uh, so for now, um, I'm going to tidy up a little bit, uh, and then we're going to have lunch with some other people from the village down at the quay, uh, the old cooperative. And I'll show you that later on when we get down there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do today is, now that we've done pretty much the plumbing and we're as far as we're going to get with that straight away, uh, is I'm going to fit the door frame so that we've got the height for everything else and I can get on and do the ceiling, which will probably be the next little stage. So here are my instructions. Not particularly complicated. Uh, the door frame is just three bits of wood that screw and glue together. Um, this is the entire hardware that comes with it to hang the door. Uh, we need the door to be as far right as possible in the opening so that we can uh, have the little sink in the corner there. And to open towards the other door. So uh like that so um yeah i'm just gonna get the bits out check them once over uh screw them together and then start fitting up against the wall okay so that literally was four screws um what we need to do is to make sure that we've left a little bit of overlap so that we'll get some plasterboard in and we can get the corner nicely done uh and then screw it to the rail on this side build up the rails in between there so that it has something to run up against that side as well so in fact what will probably happen you see there's this lip here the plasterboard should come up against that and then come up against the wood so that it's sort of like a flowing uh, pass so it's it's not far over but it's far over enough to make the sink not stick out that far. Um, I think it's gonna look quite nice actually. It's very simple, I mean literally four screws and a bit of wood glue uh, and it's done. So hopefully it looks good, but it's certainly traditional. It's very clever the way they've done it. Everything is reversible. You can turn each piece upside down and then you can turn the whole door upside down so that it can be in any position. What we need is the, the three hinges in there, and I'll put them on as soon as we've got this fixed up uh, to both sides. And then we can put the hinges in and hang the door and make sure that it's straight. Okay, so as you can see, I put a little bit of cardboard underneath there, uh, and that one is still hanging because it's not the floor isn't quite straight as usual. Um, that's because the wood will expand and I don't want it to push up and break anything above, so that way we're giving it a bit of room to go down. Um, next up is going to be putting in the hinges and getting the door in, and that'll make the frame square. And then we can mark and line up and put in uh, the the vertical across there, which I have down here, ready to go. Um, I'll basically get everything else lined up and set up. Um, so I'm going to get the hinges now. So there's our first hinge in. Now, as you can see, they have quite a thin thread and that's how we're going to adjust them. So you can sort of one screw out if you need the door to fit another way or if it's too wide or too slim or it's rubbing somewhere, you can just screw them either on the door side or on the frame side in or out. Um, and that lets you adjust them. And there we have it, a bit of faffing about getting the hinges in the right places, but the door is pretty much hung. 
um, set up the gaps. So the gap on there is larger than the gap on there, um, as you can see. So that again is just going to be unscrewing a bit of hinge on both of them probably. Um, and then set this up straight and get a little bit of rail in there. Get this flat uh, fitted so that we can screw that in. And then we're pretty good. Now, oops. Now you can really see, you know, we've created like a little entry area uh, and that door will open. So when you come in from, from the living room, there's the loo door and there's the rest of the room then over here. Um, well, I'm really quite happy with that. I really am. So it's lunchtime now and we've been invited down to the bottom cooperative. So this is the back side of the building and we're going to be eating what is in these pots. This is a traditional way of cooking here. Let me turn the camera around for you. So inside these cast iron pots there's some chicken, there's some potatoes, this cooks slowly over the fire and you just heat the pot and the lid and then put them together. So this is potato pie that Franca made. It has a, uh, it's just potato. not quite ready yet. So just the lid, the lid has been heated up on the fire like these two, and then you swap the lids out every couple of minutes. There's some potatoes and uh, some chicken. So as you can see, that's the house there. And we've just walked down and we're at the, what used to be the, well, what is the old cooperativa called the Bodega. Had a new roof done last year, subsidized, which is brilliant. And new windows. I can show you inside. This is where we'll be having lunch. So the fire is going. And there's a mural up there that was painted by a guy who lives in Pontremoli, Luciano, who is a professor of fine arts at the University of Firenze, uh, Florence. Um, here's the you know, pictures of what I cooked here, a little mini bar, and why not? And this is where the bigger parties are held or were held before the, the virus, but now that everything's getting back to normal and everyone's vaccinated, will be held again. And then there's another area down there, which I'm gonna walk down to now and show you. And then if you go down here in summer for the big, parties, the Sarocco and things. There's like a, a few tables and chairs underneath the woods ready for, uh, for grilling and so on. It's a very old paved road. And over here, all cleaned up and ready for the coming summer. Tables, chairs, dance area. But uh, you'll be seeing more of this in the uh, in the summer, certainly for Saoko, which is the local saint and the biggest party that we have here. So, with a lunch like this coming up and a glass of white wine in my hand, as you can imagine, I don't think we're going to be doing a huge amount of building.
for the rest of the day. Um, hopefully just a fabulous lunch and then down to the coast. Um, look at the sea, which I miss enormously. Um, and then back up to the Cooperativa at six for aperitifs. It is a very, very tough life, you know, but uh, someone has to live it. These are testaroli, which are the local um, sort of pasta. It's sort of like a pasta, but it's then cut into squares. It's, um, it's very specific local and apparently like a for a predecessor to, to the modern day pasta that we have these days. Apple crumble. Le pull crumble nei testi, questa è veramente... <ride> è un... I'm going to taste it any second now, I'm just going to film it. Mm -hmm. Non ti piacciono? Prendi il luare tu dentro, lascia le cose fotografie, ma io sì. So I'm absolutely stuffed and dessert hasn't been served yet but will be in a minute and while we've been in there the sun has come out, the weather is glorious um, and surprise surprise it doesn't look like we're going to make it to the beach today because uh, I might have had a glass of wine more than the one glass of wine that I was planning to have. Um, so maybe we'll go to the beach tomorrow if the weather holds. But for now, I'm going to head back in and have some dessert. Okay guys, well I'm going to have to be completely honest with you. Um, after lunch we came up, we had a couple of drinks, the kids played for a bit, and then um, a very interesting chap who I uh, only met because he's been watching this YouTube channel uh, and bought a house very nearby, just on the other side of Pontremoli, came up for, um, for a sort of a meeting, and he's an architect uh, from, from Bulgaria, um, but he's bought a house just the other side. He lives in Canada, has lived in Canada for 20 odd years. His wife's an architect too. So they had some great ideas and, uh, and came up. We went through the house, but we also drank a couple of glasses of Prosecco. Well, he had drank a couple of glasses of Prosecco. I drank a couple of Iknuza, which is the local beer. Well, it's not the local beer, it's from Sardinia, but it's the beer that they serve at the Cooperativa. And as you can see, the Aperitivo is still going well. And if I move up, which you'll see, but it is actually half past eight. So quite late, but it is a Sunday. And, wow, 
we didn't make it to the sea, but it's sort of like a day off. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the food. There's that little bit of the door. I'll be getting on with some more things tomorrow. It's going to rain all day tomorrow. Um, but I've had a great day. Um, I've had lots to eat. I've had lots to drink. Um, so, thank you very much. Thank you for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.